The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. In this unique dispensation of the church age, what a great privilege it is for an ordinary believer like us to enjoy the great wealth of extraordinary privileges that has never been given in past nor will ever be given in the future. The great privilege to be indwelt by the Trinity. To understand and to get back to the reality of the word of the Lord and to be under the proper mentoring care of a pastor teacher. To know and to understand God's will, God's purpose, God's plan and model our life to the design of Lord God Jehovah so that we can in return yield the fruit of maximum glorification unto Christ. This great wealth of reality what our Lord has given for us through this unique spiritual life. If we are the great traitors, then we are the one failures in communicating that spiritual life. And if you think you are not a traitor to Lord God Almighty, and if you think you are the one who has really been faithful to the Lord, then dear brethren, you have to be a man who has communicated the unique spiritual life. This great unique spiritual life where with you and I have much more to learn, much more to tell, individually and corporately much more to make them to realize that there is a time when every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is the only Lord because though he being inherently having a leadership type of thinking to be equal with God but then too he thought it would be best for him to become a man of slave and to execute the protocol plan of God and execute the three stages of this real spiritual life. Followed by the two power options. And he executed because he is the author and the perfecter of the doctrine that we are going through. And God honored him so much that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. And God honored him so much He told to the point that Jehovah possessed me in the beginning of his way before his works of world. Since he has been the doctor or the master of our perfecter of faith in doctrine, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was been exemplified though he was being being given this inherent power this inherent power to be equally with God he thought in humble subjection not to be equal with him but to execute this protocol plan of God he is the founder and perfecter of our doctrine as per Hebrews 12 2. he is the ownership of our doctrine and he has tossed it away and he has executed it in the stages of this execution protocol plan of God, of this unique spiritual life, with four stages, or three adult, adult steps, followed by the two power options, and the metabolized knowledge of Bible doctrine. And he, our Lord, was thought not to be robbery, to be equal with God, and he made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was being made a likeness of men, with true subject or humility. Today, dear brethren, the only way we can experience that humility is that when we give number one priority for Bible doctrine. Without this priority for Bible doctrine and communicating of the dispensation of the word of the Lord, 
we, the believers, have really forgot. And the pastor teachers have really forgot what we are going through as being a pastor. The true responsibility laid down upon our shoulders. The true responsibility which is to teach the listeners Bible doctrine. We are not doing that. We have changed our trends of Protestant Christianity to the imbalance, emphasizing the visible at the expense of invisible, emphasizing the material at the expense of the spiritual, and making the overt image at the expense of the inner dynamics of Bible doctrine in the soul. And where does this root take place of the, of the failure not to tell them the truth? Is purely the root of ignorance in the doctrine of dispensation. The overwhelming majority of Christians today do not know what God has provided for them or why he has provided for them. After salvation, what? And what does the Christian or what does the God desire for a Christian to do? If believers do not realize that they belong to the royal family of God, how can they fulfill their destinies? How can they execute the protocol plan of God for the church age if they do not know such kind of a plan exists? Ignorance undercuts every good intention, dear brethren. No matter how a Christian desires to make his life count for God, if he is ignorant for God's plan, he fails to glorify God. At best, the impact of his life is fleeting, no sooner achieved than dissipated. At worst, his impact is for evil, as the inadvertently struggles in Satan's cause to improve this devil's world. Dear brethren, the uniqueness of the church age. God has a purpose for every believer. Have you ever noted what is his plan for you? Have you ever known, after salvation, what? Dispensations are an essential frame of reference. The biblical answer to after salvation what lies in the assets God has given specifically to the royal family and his mandates for utilizing those assets. The Christian way of life is clarified, therefore, by understanding how the church age is unique. While being related to the other dispensations, dispensations orient the believer to God's plan for history. They unlock the scriptures for accurate personal application. If Jehovah has possessed you in his glory, in eternity past before the works of his world, then he will teach you doctrine, doctrine, and doctrine alone. So dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide. We shall continue in the next day. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that I was given to fellowship with you through thy word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit will enlighten us in these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge, sovereign Lord, for we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.